with the Democratic Detonation War Bond quickly approaching. I figured it was a pretty good time to dump out a couple more loadouts. Let's get right into it. Starting with a build for machine gun lovers. This whole build is going to be based around the heavy machine gun stratagem that got added in pretty recently. You're going to want to combine that with the supply backpack because I found out you can actually resupply yourself, which opens up a whole new avenue to being a heavy machine gunner on Helldivers. And you do this by hitting the five key on your keyboard. And on controller, I'm not really too sure. The commenters will have to figure it out down below. And as for your two offensive strategy i'm going with the 500 kilogram bomb eagle strike and the walking barrage and as for weapons and armor well that's going to be up to you helldiver but just so you know heavy armor did receive a 10 percent defense buff so you could give yourself the full look of a heavy machine gunner or since you're not using a personal shield you could also use the medical armor which gives you six stims since you're going to be getting shot a lot the choice is yours helldiver and i'll leave your primary secondary and grenades up to you it depends on the environment the deployment the enemy type i like using the scorcher for the automaton and the liberator penetrator for the bug keep in mind the dominator is also very good for the automatons as well now as for the gameplay on this build it's very similar to how you run the crowd control build that i made last week you're basically going to be using the heavy machine gun in its 450 rpm mode and you're just going to go to town on everything keep in mind this thing has a lot of recoil so i usually tap fire it in short burst and only going full auto if I'm really close to them and I can get a really good shot on their head. Now, this is strictly speaking about the automaton. Against the bug, this build isn't really that good because you can kill, you know, the little bugs and you can also kill you know, some of the other stuff, like the Brood Commanders and stuff like that. But you're going to be pretty much irrelevant to any of the medium armor, heavy armor enemies that the bugs have. And the Automaton, on the other hand, uh, you can shred the Devastators. You can kill the gunship by shooting the engine. You can kill the normal guys. You can kill the hulks if you get behind them. You can kill the tanks. You can shoot the tank turrets in the back. There's a lot more options for you to be able to do damage and kill things compared to the bug. Now, talking about the recoil again on the heavy machine gun you're going to want to fire this thing in crouch or prone if you're able that will greatly help out with the bullet spread keep in mind that you only have 75 rounds and you have a very long reload and a quick tip for using the supply backpack try to resupply when your magazine count reaches zero that way when you hit five on your keyboard it'll give you two mag if you wait until you're empty that only gives you one and you have to waste two supply drops. Also, like I said in the previous video, if you're going to resupply with the supply backpack, make sure you take it off first. This is only for the supply drops that you call in because it's always going to resupply your backpack first. So just drop it on the ground, resupply, and then pick it back up. But overall, I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with this build, especially against the automatons more than anything. But I will admit, fighting the automatons without a shield can be very tricky. So just keep your head on the swivel and open up on pretty much everything that you see you have tons of ammo to do it there's no need to be mindful anymore with this build now going over to our next build this is going to be a refresh of our at deployable rocket build that we made a couple weeks ago and as you know i talked very highly of that little setup that i had and it still works but this is just better mainly because of one of helldivers newest additions the quasar cannon now i'm not really going to go over this too much we've seen this in practice for a good while now. Basically, it is a anti-tank stratagem that has infinite ammo. The only drawback is it has a five second charge up and a 10 second cooldown. That's it. Now you're gonna wanna plop this in right where the deployable AT rocket was in my last build. And there you go, literally drag and drop. Of course, I'm using the light gunner armor, which gives me 100 armor rating and puts me in the light armor category. My primary is sort of depending on what enemies I'm fighting, but I believe I use the scorcher for the automatons or the dominator. For the bugs, I'm usually using the liberator penetrator or the new breaker incinerary, which actually received another buff to the fire damage. So keep that in mind and the very useful stun grenade. As for your stratagem, I'm of course using the personal shield, the quasar cannon, 500 kg bomb and the orbital railgun now this loadout overall works on both bugs and bots 
it's very versatile and we've kind of gone over this in the last build video so i'm not really going to spend too much time on this basically you can shoot down drop ships you can shoot chargers and one shot them you can kill bile titans you can kill tank you can kill hulks you can take out the automaton factories you can take out the automaton gunships it does it all and it's very ammo friendly i wouldn't say this build is a jack of all trades but it's very close to it it does one thing very well and that's focus down the higher level threat one at a time and this brings us to our next build so from popular requests and because this weapon got buffed in the latest patch we're gonna make a build around the amr sniper rifle now this thing is beloved amongst the helldiver fan it was already pretty good and then they buffed the damage by 30 percent in the latest update we're going to combine that with the jump pack which in my personal experience i kind of hope they buff the jump pack recharge time by like 25 percent i think that'll make this build a little bit more crazy the cooldown is a little bit long but i still like it for your armor set it's kind of up to you since you're not using a shield i would use a medical outfit so you have extra stem or using a lightweight armor set so you have more mobility or a combination of the two because you are going to be a qrf response build and you really really do not want to get into any big fights you want to stay kind of mid-range with this kind of setup your two offensive stratagems are kind of up to you walking barrage and the 500 kilogram bomb are my favorite but you can also roll with the airstrike in the 120 orbital barrage stun grenades are my recommendation so you can just drop them and get out if you need to jump away really fast and your primary if you have it, I would recommend using the last sickle since you have infinite ammo if you don't let it overheat and it has a very, very good precision. Now, this build is heavily built for bot. As much as I love the AMR sniper rifle, it does not do a very good job versus the versus the, uh, the bugs. You can one shot the brood commanders with the AMR and that's about it. Taking down chargers is nigh impossible and the best you can do against a bile titan you can disable them by shooting under them they have two separate sacks they have the sack at the far back which is like his tail you can shoot that and that will disable his spit and if you shoot the sack that is kind of like towards the front like right under his chin that'll cause some heavy hemorrhaging and bleeding which eventually he will die i think he also gets enraged and he has a very high aggro towards you, at least for me in my experience, which isn't really that great at killing them. So against bugs, it feels like you're out of place. You're kind of just running around. You can't really deal with the chargers that well outside of your stratagems, and you can't deal with the bile titans besides disabling them. So I would not recommend this against the bugs. That being said, on the flip side, against the bots, it is very, very potent. You can take out any of the Devastators. You can take out any of the Hulks, the smaller units. You can take out all of them. You can deal with the factories with your stratagem. You can deal with the gunships. You can shoot them down with the AMR as well by shooting their engine. Now the factory strider is the new automaton. I haven't fought that yet with the AMR, but I would believe that you probably can't do damage to that. That's a really heavily armored mech and it doesn't have any vents or anything. I think you just have to blow that up, but you can take out the tank towers and you can take out the normal tanks by shooting the vent. The only thing you're kind of weak against is the drop ships, but this build is very nice against the robots if you can manage not to get gunned down because you're using a jetpack instead of a shield you can do some very nice qrf tactics in long range support with your squad and that brings us to our final build now under popular recommendation we're making a build around the auto cannon now this thing is so good that it has not been buffed at all and it is still in the top five easily just because of how good this thing actually is so the auto cannon gets a lot of ammo it is going to take up a backpack slot so you're going to lose the personal shield but you gain a weapon that can deal with devastator it can take out the factories you can take out bug holes you can take out hulk you can take out chargers but you have to shoot them in the back a lot or right under their chin a lot so keep that in mind i don't think you can kill bile titan but you can disable them very easily by shooting under them which causes heavy bleeding so that i mean possibly if you shoot them in their face enough maybe you can uh take them out but i haven't really stood there long enough to gun them down for all of my ammo you're probably better off just dropping a stratagem on them you can take out tanks if you shoot them in the vents same thing with tank towers you can shoot them in the vents as well i think you can take out drop ships as well but they usually fly away before i take them out with the autocannon 
I could be wrong about that. I could be wrong about that. Let me know in the comments if you can actually take out Dropship. But I usually don't just because it takes so much ammo and takes such a long time that they already fly away before I get to down them. But I digress. Now, paired with the auto cannon, your two offensive stratagems, I like to use the Eagle Airstrike and the 120 millimeter Orbital Barrage. Your weapons are up to you. Your armor is also up to you. Depends on what you want to go for. If you want to be fast and move around, you can run with light armor. If you want to kind of take a hit, be a little bit more tankier, you can roll with heavy. And I'm going to throw one more build video in here. Just because I like to use this, it doesn't mean that you should. And that's going to be with the spear. Now, the spear is a lock-on missile launcher that has a lot of negative impressions. Mainly because the lock-on function is very, very weird. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I would use this build with some caution. So you're going to be giving up your backpack slot automatically. And you're using a weapon that sometimes doesn't work. So keep that in mind. Now what the spear can do, it can one-shot the spore clusters. It can one-shot the shrieker nest. It can one-shot the tank towers. It can two-shot tanks. It can two-shot the Hulk. It can one-shot factory. I don't know how many shots it takes to take out the factory strider, the like the new big gunship mech thing. Um, Possibly three shots, four shots, I'm not sure. But it does a lot of damage. It can one-shot the gunships that fly around. It can take out dropships in one shot. The problem is it doesn't lock on to the engines. It locks on to the hull, so it doesn't take them out so yeah it's kind of a problem it can one shot the titan if you shoot them in the head which is also really hard to do and it can one shot the chargers but usually you have to hit them in the face but if it has a hard time doing that as well so it, it all it all depends on those very chancy so as i described to you so far this thing sounds really awesome right the problem is the lock-on function is so incredibly broken that you're gonna spend half your time using it just trying to lock onto something and that will sometimes even get you killed it can also take out the signal jammers but i'm getting a lot of mixed reports about this in the comment section some people are saying that there needs to be a factory nearby in order to lock onto it to blow it up but it also just blatantly says that you can blow it up in the patch note so maybe it's something they need to work on and they need to update but yeah just keep that in mind. Now, primary and secondary, that's kind of up to you, depending on what you're fighting. I like using the Liberator Penetrator or the Dominator or the Scorcher, depending on what I'm fighting. I usually bring a 500 kilogram bomb and a walking barrage. And most of the time, I'm either using the light gunner armor or I'm using the medical armor that gives you two extra stim. And the spear can be useful if it decides to lock on. So whenever they decide to actually fix the lock on function fully, it'll be pretty nice. My recommendation is to tag whatever you're trying to blow up. Supposedly, if you tag something before you lock on, it helps it identify it faster. I think that's all hogwash. <laughs> But, you know, whatever helps, I guess. Okay, this is officially the last build I'm going to add in this video. It's going to be based on using the Ballistic Shield. Because it received a huge update that I can't afford not to include it. They updated the hitbox. And they updated the way your Helldiver is positioned behind it. So that you're completely hidden behind the shield when you use it. Making it a automaton nightmare. Now, the Ballistic Shield does not work too well on explosion. It's only laser. So keep that in mind. You can actually break the shield by getting hit with too many explosions trying to block it. Other than that, the build's pretty straightforward. If you see anyone with lasers trying to kill you, you whip the shield out. Normally, you can use a submachine gun, but you can also use your pistols and everything with it as well. And you just gun them down. Try to keep them in front of you, if possible. And you can also use this build with the stalwart machine gun, which is a very good light machine gun that you can reload on the move. It has good ammo capacity. It's very nice. Kind of underrated at, the, at this point. But by doing that, you put the shield on your back if you have the machine gun out. But the shield still works on your back. You just have to run away. So, pretty quick build. Your armor, up to you you your guns up to you your stratagems kind of up to you i'm just throwing this in here because it's a pretty good update to the shield and i figured it's worth mentioning in the video and that's going to be sort of the end of this video here we got a lot of different loadouts a lot of different builds that i put together over the last couple weeks pretty much everything in the game is viable in some way and hopefully these build videos kind of help you see that that you can use whatever you want whenever you want which is the crazy thing about hell divers how there isn't really one meta that everyone needs to stick to in hell divers 2 life comes at you quick and by life i mean bile titans hulks and chargers 
So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to tactical two-step your way to victory. But first, we're going to need to get kitted out. So we're going to be rocking our quick response force loadout, equipped with the latest technology in democracy. So first off, you're going to need to equip your favorite set of light armor. My recommendation, if you can get your hands on the light gunner it gives you a pretty nifty perk that gives you the same armor value as medium with all the benefits of light armor the rest of your outfit doesn't really matter make yourself look good once you're done with that head over to your weapons of choice i prefer using the newly equipped plasma punisher but if you still like old reliable you can go with the slugger shotgun your secondary is dealer's choice same goes for your grenade i would recommend using the stun grenade if you got it it is extremely powerful right now but with all that out of the way let's head to your stratagem loadout we're gonna list out the choices from left to right starting with the shield generator backpack i know i know it's been nerfed but look at the end of the day you're still wearing light arm and those chargers can and will smash you into toothpaste and don't even get me started about the automaton it's better to have it than to not next up is going to be your expandable at rocket this thing is going to be your bread and butter not only does it have a one minute cooldown in fair weather conditions i might add but you get two of them and if you played the recent update you can one shot chargers if you hit them right in the face in the next slot it's going to be dealer's choice personally i prefer the 500 kilogram bomb because as a hell diver bigger is always better but you could just swap this out for the eagle airstrike both of which get the job done especially if you pair it with the stun grenade you can lock your enemies down and bring the hurt on them the last option is going to be no debate you're going to need the orbital railgun this thing's like a gift from the heavens delivering an almost instantaneous precision strike on chargers bile titans hulks you name it. But wait, before you head out and start spreading some democracy, go ahead and leave a like if you're enjoying the video. But we're not stopping there. Now that I've shown you all the Lego pieces to put this build together, let's go over strategy to make sure you don't get grinded into dust. Stage one of this plan, you're going to want to keep moving a lot. I know I sounded real confident when I said the light armor gives you the same armor value as medium armor. Yeah, the Chargers don't care about that. Neither does the Bile Titan. Or, of course, the Rocket Devastator. That extra stamina and movement speed, you're going to want to use that every second that you're breathing. The quick in QRF isn't just because it sounds cool. I mean, maybe, a little bit. Regardless, you're going to want to dip, dodge, and dive everything that comes towards you. Stage 2 of this master plan is regarding the expendable anti-tank rocket. It's called expendable for a reason. And I'm not saying that only because it has one shot, because that is technically true. But what I mean is, in any situation that you think you might need it, call it in. If you're on an objective, call it in. If you're at extraction, call it in. They're, they're on a one minute cooldown. And remember, Super Earth spares no expense. Because if you don't need it, maybe your teammates do. It is equipable if you have a free third slot. Keep that in mind. And part three is kind of regarding the 500 kilogram bomb. You see, it doesn't always kill thing for some reason. The blast radius depends on what's in front of it. So if there's a small rock or if there's a big rock, there's a building, whatever, whatever that you want to die, it's probably not going to die. So you need to be very careful on where you place it. Preferably just put it right under them. That usually does the trick. And part four to this plan is to spread democracy, I guess? Let's go ahead and add in another loadout in here. Now, this is not a part of the QRF strike package. This is more for the enjoyers who love their bugs. Well done. Now for this kit, you're going to want to rock any armor you like, as long as it has an engineer kit perk attached to it. This will give you two extra grenades. You're going to need it. Your primary weapon is going to be the breaker incinerary. Your secondary is dealer's choice, and your grenade is going to be the incinerary grenade. You probably know where we're going by now. As for your loadouts, you're probably going to want the shield backpack. Things are going to get pretty hot. The flamethrower stratagem is going to be our next choice. After that, we're going to use the napalm airstrike. And to top it all off, let's go ahead and add in the three. 380 millimeter orbital barrage or if you wanted even more firepower you could swap it out for the incinerary mines and the way you're going to want to use this loadout is to only use it when extracting the scientist mission so no one escapes and all the missions take four times as long hopefully you know there's a lot of sarcasm in there don't actually do that now this particular configuration there's only one way to use it and that is if you find something or someone who is not currently on fire make it your mission to do it so throw your grenades use your flamethrower call on your napalm strike saturate the area of bugs and glorious hellfire and i know the flamethrower can be very addictive 
at time. But don't forget, you have an incendiary shotgun at your disposal. It cooks those bugs just as well. Well done, that is. And before I continue, I will note that this uh, setup is not exactly great in the higher tiers when you start finding bile titans every 30 seconds. But I'm hoping the glory of burning everything to ash will make you forget this very important problem. All right, today we have three different Helldiver builds. We're gonna be showing off their strengths and weaknesses as we tactical two-step our way to victory. If you guys end up using any of these builds, definitely tell me how you feel about them in the comments down below and leave a like while you're down there. All right, let's begin. First off, this build is more themed around long range supporting with our primary weapons being mostly lasers. Doing this offers superior ammo economy. Granted, as long as you don't let your weapon overheat, but regardless, we're going with a simple but effective loadout. First off, I recommend using the light scout armor. Not only does it give you better radar for spotting out enemies, but it also makes you harder to detect, which playing a sort of mid to long range build you definitely don't want chargers running up on you every time you decide to engage the enemy because as i stated before we definitely want to play sort of in the back mid-range at this point in time the helmet doesn't really matter just pick whatever matches your armor set in the future i believe they're going to add on different stats and bonuses much like your equipment but i digress as for your primary secondary and grenade that is a personal preference but i really do like the las sickle that they just added into the patch and the scorcher secondary is going to be the redeemer until they decide to add a speed loader on the revolver and your grenade well that is pretty best in slot is the stun grenade because it stuns titans it stuns everybody basically for about five seconds keep in mind these will probably be adjusted in the future because they are way strong right now but like i said your weapons are going to be your discretion because we're not really going to be using those now the loadout itself consists of a laser rover backpack now this does mean you will not be able to use your shield so using this build against the automatons is going to be very risky to say the least but it is doable a general rundown of the laser rover it pretty much shoots anything in your immediate vicinity even if you're not looking in that direction so you can kind of get some precog on who's going to be trying to kill you from around you it usually doesn't overheat even on hot planet at least not that i've found out so that's pretty good it's not really effective against heavily armored enemies because it is you know basically just a primary weapon but it's extra dps now your secondary stratagem, this is gonna be the bread and butter. You're gonna be using the laser cannon. Now recently, this actually received a buff, but the main reason we're using this is because it is going to replace your primary source of damage. You can bring down the automaton hulks by shooting them in the face and holding it there for about four or five seconds. You can even kill chargers if you have, let's be honest, 30 seconds of him staying stationary. You have to shoot him under the chin, so good luck with that. And overall, it is highly effective against multiple enemies, especially when your rover is helping you out. You can get double the DPS and offer some very nice synergy. Not to mention the ammo economy, which is theoretically infinite if you don't let the uh, weapons overheat. But enough about that. Let's talk about the other two stratagem. I'm going to be using the 500 kilogram bomb. It gets the job done. It brings down Bile Titan. It's a very big boom when you need it in five seconds or less. But you can add whatever you want here. The second slot being the orbital railgun is my quick way of dispatching the higher level enemies without really thinking about it. Because keep in mind, the laser cannon is good at most things, but it's not good at everything. So having some stratagems that can bring down those higher tiered threat with relative ease is going to be your uh, best friend out there. Now, the pros and cons of this build, you're going to want to stay mobile. You're going to want to stay at a medium to long range. And this build alone is not super great. So definitely want to stay in your hell diver pack so they can pull some of the aggro from you. It definitely seems to thrive against insect, believe it or not, unless the hunters decide to jump you, which happens quite a lot. But against the automaton, since you're not using a shield generator, when they decide to hit you, you really feel it. And if you get hit in the head with a crit, you're done. That's more or less the reason why you're going to use the scout armor that lowers your aggro. You're going to need it. Trust me. Overall, I really liked it. Officers a pretty decent playstyle from long range. And you can, with some fair amount of effort, bring down pretty heavily armored targets. And anything you can't bring down, that's where your stratagems are for. All right, let's go over to our next build. Now, as a quick disclaimer, currently using arc weapons is causing game crashes now that will definitely change in the future so just know that before you try this loadout all right first off you're gonna need the new arc armor that comes in the cutting edge war bond this adds 95 percent arc resilient you can probably see where we're going with it as i said before your helmet doesn't do anything right now so whatever matches same thing with your cape moving on to your primary secondary 
and grenade. I am using the arc blitz. Personally, I don't like it. It's that simple. But since we're going with an arc build, I figured I'd throw it in there. To each their own. Secondary is going to be the redeemer. Big surprise. Your grenade is up to you. Stun grenades are very strong, but also, you know, normal grenades. I mean, you know, you can take out bug holes and etc. Personal preference. Now your stratagems, this is going to be fairly straightforward. Now this is a either or situation. You could go with the shield generator, which I know a lot of people do that, but I'm going to go with the arc thrower. Big surprise on an arc build but i'm gonna but i'm going to combine that with the laser rover and i feel like for me playing around with this build the arc thrower is already extremely powerful it almost needs no introduction if you haven't used it you guys need to try it but i will say you know after they fix the crashing problem with it you know but i digress you can zap chargers you can zap hulks you can zap devastators you can zap bugs it chains the enemies it is incredible and as a quick tool tip if you fully charge the arc thrower, you only need to do a half charge on your next zap to give the full damage. That's how you're able to rapid fire the arc thrower. But yeah, the arc thrower is great. But if you combine that with the laser rover, you now have something that is doing constant DPS and you have the zapping of the arc thrower in between. Now, like I said before, it's not going to work against heavily armored targets, but against the medium and light armor guys, having an extra set of hands or I guess lasers in this comparison works out pretty well. But I understand if you want to roll with the shield, it works just as good. The arc thrower is fully capable of doing all the rest of the work. Oh, I should mention this here before we continue um, regarding the laser rover backpack. Um, it can kill you if you are at a really weird angle when, when it's shooting preferably if you're going uphill it can kill your teammate it doesn't care about that the arc weapons can also kill your teammate by the way if they're not wearing the you know armor that we're wearing the arc thrower oh excuse me the laser rover can also bug out where it'll hover over your head and it won't shoot anything it'll be directly behind your body you have to re-equip it so you have to drop the backpack and put it back on to reset it that bug may be fixed at some point but i'm letting you know now with that out of the way let's talk about our last two stratagems by no big surprise you're gonna roll with the tesla tower in your third slot this thing is a defense stratagem it is highly lethal to anyone that is not wearing the armor that we're wearing keep that in mind so you are fully responsible on where you put this tesla tower and destroying the tesla tower if your teammates are going to get too close or you think it's going to cause any harm to your teammate i have done drop where i've killed 12 hell divers by using a tesla tower and other arc related ability it can happen it probably will happen just be careful now this thing is pretty efficient at dealing with the softer target it doesn't really do a great job at taking out the 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 more heavily armored targets like chargers and bile titans and etc actually i'm not sure if it, it can even take out a bile titan to be honest but one thing it does do it is a great aggro puller the ai will go for the tesla tower every single time over going for you or your group member now if there's an objective that the ai have to destroy they'll probably go for that instead but outside of that you should be golden now this thing works really well on bug robots not so much just because they don't really have to melee it to destroy it they just have to you know shoot it there are those odd cases where you can throw the tesla tower into a automaton base and it'll just zap everything in a 30 meter radius but they will definitely quickly destroy it because they'll just shoot it as for the bug if you aren't going to drop a 500 kilogram bomb on a bug breed dropping a tesla tower on it is just as effective because they will immediately come out of the spawn and go for the tesla tower because that's going to pull the most aggro and also zap them and chain through enemies while they're doing that so very good but it comes with a lot of risk like i said and your third strategy is going to be a uh, player's choice you can go with another defense you can go with a uh, offense 500 kilogram bomb rail cannon you know whatever i would recommend that you go with an offense stratagem or if you have it unlocked you even go with the patriot if you want because your loadout so far is very uh arc thrower heavy and the arc thrower can't really deal with everything in the game and it's already bad enough that you don't have a shield generator now going over to our last build but keep in mind uh if you guys have been enjoying a video so far definitely leave a like and a subscribe it helps us out immensely with the algorithm, especially if you want to see more build videos like this. It lets me know. But I digress. Our last build is going to be very support heavy. I recommend using light armor with the two extra grenade. Your primary, secondary, and grenade are up to you, but I think I'm using the sickle, the redeemer, and the stun grenade. Now, the theme of this loadout is just being a very good teammate, making sure the well-being of your Helldivers and the completion of the mission above all else. You're going to be carrying the support ammo backpack. You can give your Helldivers ammo 
for their rocket launchers, for their weapons, for their grenades, everything. It does only have four uses and then you have to get another one. Now I know you can resupply the backpack from using a supply drop, but I would recommend that you take the backpack off before you do that because you'll take up other people's ammo. And the cooldown is about five minutes or so so it's not too bad to get a new backpack so just keep that in mind your second stratagem is going to be the deployable at rocket this thing has received a pretty massive buff but long story short you get two rockets they can one shot chargers in the head they have a one minute cooldown and they're pick and drop very good for intense situations your next stratagem is going to be something that i've been kind of testing out these past few days it's going to be the ems mortar now this thing stun robot and it keeps them stunned until it runs out of ammo meaning that your teammates can get behind them they can airstrike them whatever but oddly enough this works very well on bug it does the same thing it does to the robot it stuns them it locks them down it has a lot of ammo if you have your ship upgrade and gives your team an extra breathing room the cooldown is relatively quick you can drop it down wherever and unlike the normal mortar this doesn't just kill your teammates but if it does land on them it will slow them down although i haven't had any teammates die because of that but it can happen I suppose. So keep that in mind. Definitely would recommend dropping it down whenever there's a bug breach or whenever you're doing some kind of defense objective. It can shoot pretty far too. So don't be afraid to drop it down wherever you're running. Our last stratagem is going to be dealer's choice. I'm using the Orbo Railgun because you can bring down Bile Titans, Chargers, you know, whatever. Hulk, but fairly decent eve and the cooldown is pretty good too and like i said this loadout is highly supportive you want to be moving around the battlefield collecting samples dropping your rail guns where you need them resupplying your teammates dropping the anti-tank rockets whenever you think you're going to need them just being the best little hell diver helper you possibly can be but you really don't see that a lot in the higher tiers people usually run around with their shield etc you know one man army kind of style i get it but hopefully these loadouts give you a, an idea of different play styles you can have with hell divers whether it be offense defense or something in between if you made this far in a video i greatly appreciate it it means a lot if you want to see more videos like this one leave a like and consider supporting the channel with our newly activated channel membership through the youtube join button or the links in the description down below